Hello there, good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer from St Wilfrid's Church, Carverley. We'll be using the, the words from Morning Prayer from the Church of England for this Wednesday, the 14th of June. Uh, if you want to find, if you just search up on the internet, you'll be able to find the words to follow along with. Um, yeah, here we go. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your Spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The psalm for today is Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. My soul shall glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look upon him, and be radiant, and your faces shall not be ashamed. This poor soul cried, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Blessed is the one who trusts in him. Fear the Lord, all you his holy ones, for those who fear him lack nothing. Lions may lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, my children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is there who delights in life and longs for days to enjoy good things? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the broken-hearted, and will save those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the troubles of the righteous. From them all will the Lord deliver them. He keeps all their bones, so that not one of them is broken. But evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and will condemn none of those who seek refuge in him. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our Bible passage this morning is from Romans 8, 1-11. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. 
And for this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. If you are, But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone that does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit that dwells in you. Well, it's Paul at his most Pauline. Romans is really, really dense. You could do several years of PhD on unpacking that passage. Um, and certainly many, many a sermon has been said with, with different points. What can we take from, from it this morning? Whoever it is that we think has the spirit of, of Christ in them, um, whoever counts as as a Christian, as someone, or as someone Christ is at work in redeeming. And that's a big topic. More people than I suspect. Whoever that is, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If Christ is in you, if you are in Christ, then there's not condemnation. It doesn't mean that we don't get things wrong. It doesn't mean that we're not judged, for for we will be. Also, we can delight God. I'm sure that we can do things which please him. Just because we're, we're imperfect doesn't mean we can't. But this is the start point for whatever it is I'm trying to do in faith. I talk a lot about vocation, about working out what it is that we're, we're called to do and that joy comes in living the life that you are most called to do. And I am called to be the best Rob Denton I can. You're called to be whoever that is for you. And that is going to involve cooperating with God. There's this dual thing. We are called to work as hard as we can at our discipleship and then God opens us up to him. The, the the spirit is at work in us and we call what, what God does in a sanctification, this gradual improvement of us. And that can be hard to do if we are beating ourselves up and feeling like we absolutely have to do it and we must and we owe God this and I better be good enough. And of course you can't be good enough to earn the privilege of God transforming you. I don't know what that would mean to be good enough for that. Whoever you are, wherever you are this morning, you are entirely and utterly beloved of God. And there is no condemnation for anything you have ever done. There is judgment. There are things that we need to resolve. There is stuff that needs to improve. But we don't start our journey of cooperation with, with the gardener, with the potter. We don't start that stuff under condemnation. We are freed by the work of Christ and in that liberation can begin to grow and change and allow God to grow and change us. Whatever it is that you are beating yourself up for, or wishing you had done differently, I hope there's something, that, that tends to be what we do. Ask God to show you, but try and approach it with the grace and love that God approaches you. And from that point of not being condemned, we can begin to concentrate on having our mind on things of the spirit and not of the flesh, of the bad stuff, whatever that means. I pray we all find freedom and liberation in order to begin cooperating in new ways with the work of the spirit within us. We say together the Benedictus this morning. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. 
and you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Freed from condemnation, then let us pray for the church and the world, and thank God for his goodness. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you call us into life, and life in all its fullness. That you call us to put down whatever condemnation we place on ourselves, for you do not place it on us. Help us to see those areas where our minds are not on the right things. And help, them, help us to keep them on you, to notice when we need to keep them on you, and to, to cooperate with you, that we might grow the fruit of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray this week for social services, for those who work in social services uh, across all sectors, helping people who are struggling in different ways, helping kids, dealing with safeguarding issues, working with children in care, supporting families so that kids don't have to go into care, working with the homeless, those released from prison, seeking to provide the wraparound care that the NHS is not set up to deliver. Would you bless everybody at work in that sector, give them new recruits full of energy, sustainable working conditions, wise managers, a just level of pay, peace and wisdom. We pray for all those being dealt with, all those in need of social services in this country, those from the system has not worked. Would you give them would you give them peace and comfort and enough physical security and help us work together as a country to need fewer and fewer social services workers to be a place where all have a fair chance, where all are treated with dignity and looked after and have opportunities to flourish and contribute. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're called this day to pray for those who work in the criminal justice system, for lawyers, for the police, for those who judge, judges and magistrates, for those on juries, for those administering the system, for prison workers, for prisoners, those undergoing trial or investigation at the moment. We long for our justice system to be scarcely necessary, Lord, for it, for it, for it to work with fairness, with efficiency, without bias, swiftly. Help us to rehabilitate those who need rehabilitation to treat with dignity those whom the state has charge of, to be a society where people don't need to turn to crime and are encouraged to grow and mature and behave well, and bless and comfort all those who have suffered and are victims of crime and help us to look after them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those known to us here at church who are unwell or struggling in body, mind or spirit. Those in our families. We lift them up before you, Lord. We ask for your healing, for your comforting presence. We take this moment to name them before you now.
Help us to love each other here at church, Lord. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers together, the collect for today is this. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Moving on, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's been good to be with you this morning or whenever it is you're watching this. Go well into your day and your week. God bless.